Welcome to Testimony, a musician story. Heard at TestimonyStories.com and narrated by myself, Brown Theron, the music lover constantly seeking positive music. Let's get started. His distinct southern tone and cadence quickly alerts listeners that it's Trip Lee on the track. But before he became a household name to Christian music lovers, his parents gave him his grandfather's name. Trip, short for triple, was born William Bearfield III on December 17th. 1987 in Dallas, Texas. He grew up in a two-parent household with his sister. His dad was an insurance salesman and his mom, a dentist. The Bearfields believed in Christ, but weren't necessarily your, quote, Christian family, end quote. Um, every one of my family is a professing Christian, but yeah, I mean, it just depends on what you mean by that. You know, we would go to church somewhat regularly when I was growing up as a kid, um, but it wasn't a Christian household in the sense that we, you know, we prayed before meals, but that was pretty much the extent of it. And, you know, not because my parents didn't want me to pray. It's just not how they ran the household. And so, but it wasn't Christian in the sense that we had like family Bible studies and they were always encouraging me to you know, show me my Bible and follow Jesus. But we did go to church. Um, and so when I, when I really uh, came to faith in Jesus, it was because I was going to the youth group at the church uh, that my family went to. And uh, much of my much of my encouragement early on as a Christian uh, came from, you know, some of it was from my youth pastor there at, there at the church and and other folks that I met who were also following Jesus and graciously gave me lots of that time, which I was really thankful for. In recent years, Tripp added the title author to his description, and currently has two books under his belt, both named after his last two albums, The Good Life and rise. Book reading has always been a hobby he loved to do since childhood. Yeah, I guess I was laid back. I'm laid back now. I've always been kind of laid back. So I wasn't, I didn't get into a lot of trouble at all. You know, I, I pretty much didn't get in any trouble. The only trouble I really ever got in as a kid was when I hit middle school and I didn't want to do my homework. That's really the only trouble I ever got into. I wasn't a troublemaker or nothing like that. I was a good kid, laid back, athletic, um, yeah, and I and I already loved music when I was a, when I was a little kid. Uh, so I I used to love reading. So I loved reading when I was a little kid, and then started hating it when I hit like seventh grade, eighth grade. There was like a little gap where I didn't read nothing. I didn't. Re- I was just trying to get by whatever I could for class. I just did not. I didn't like school at all for a few few years, and then didn't love it again until I was starting to read stuff that really changed my life. Like what you're hearing so far. Check us out at TestimonyStories.com. That's TestimonyStories with an S. Dot com. Where you can hear content for you and about you. Everyone has a testimony. Everyone has a testimony. And we want to hear yours. Tell us how God has transformed your life. Each month, we will select a person to highlight and interview. Find out more at TestimonyStories.com. Testimony. Testimony, where Christian hip-hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip-hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones 
or turn the stereo volume up and listen. I am not your old rat, I am not a clone, yeah. You are not my puppeteer and I am not a drone, yeah. Got a new master and I follow him alone. Hold a good life till I'm gone, the song. You are listening to Trip Lee's Testimony, A Musician's Story. Yes, sir. Come on. Hey, I was born less than human. I know it sounds crazy, but I was really born a robot as a baby. No real life in me. I just played my role. No self-control. I just did what I was told. I got my first order. I was just a day old. But I didn't have a chance because my heart was way cold. My heart took the orders. It couldn't break them all. Sold under bondage and I couldn't take control. So I was just chilling in my robot clothes with my robot friends and my robot flows. Living robot ways because that's all I know till I heard I could be free for my robot soul I'm like, why you always trying to control me? You are not my boss, that's the old me Obviously, you don't know my style I'm not a, I'm not a robot now Around the time he stopped reading books, he started writing raps Yeah, I started rapping probably when I was about 11 or 12 You know, I, I think the first hip-hop I heard that I fell in love with It was the LL Cool J song I don't remember what it was, what song it was, but I'd already loved music. Hip-hop really captivated me. And, you know, I loved basketball, and I was playing basketball. And I loved baseball, so I played baseball. And I loved raps. I was trying to write raps. Uh, since I was probably like 11, 10, 11, 12. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like it was good, but I was writing stuff. And, uh, you know, I think it was probably when I was about 14, 13, 14, I was like, man, I think I... Because all me and my friends wanted to rap. Everybody wanted to rap. And so we would be, like, beating on the tables and rapping at lunch battling <laughs> battling people and we had like this little spiral notebook we used to pass around and we would write rhymes in it got taken up a few times we was writing rhymes in class but i started to realize like man i think i have more passion for this than my friends do and i think i might even be a little better than they are i think maybe i it's something to this maybe i could pursue it and so i i kind of kept pursuing it and ways to try to record stuff and like most of his peers trip wanted to be a rapper but unlike most of his peers he realized he had a knack for writing. God took that skill set and cultivated it to something far beyond the imagination of a teenager. That cultivating process took to fruition the moment Tripp surrendered himself to Christ. When I was about 14, that's when I, that's when I started going to uh, the youth group at this church. And um, I thought I was a Christian already just because everybody around me said they were Christians and... Uh, and I repeated a prayer after this children's pastor, but I don't think I understood who God was, what the gospel was, what my sin had done or what Christ had done about my sin. I think I just repeated some random words and I didn't disagree with who Jesus was. It just didn't mean nothing to me. Um, and I think it was when I was about 14 and started going to this youth group that as a youth pastor faithfully preached the gospel, God worked in my heart and moved me to turn from my sin and put my faith in him and follow him. And I, and I did see kind of immediate life change. I still struggle with a bunch of stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I did see immediate kind of fruit of a, of a new life, a new heart, new desires. Yeah, Lord, I know I'm hoping that my situation will switch. That you'll show me you're amazing by erasing it quick. But I've noticed that my hope is in you changing it quick. Instead of knowing you're enough, Lord, I was chasing your gifts. But then I opened up your text and look at David in there. The situations was grim, but it ain't changing what they They prayed you take it away, but sought your face in the end. And found comfort in your justice and the grace you extend. So when this life full of strife, if my days get grayer, I'm content with the fact that you'll stay my savior. No change in my game, man, it ain't no greater. Comfort that was found in you, that's so major. When this life full of strife, if my days get grayer, I'm content with the fact that you'll stay my savior. No change in my game, man, it ain't no greater. Comfort that was found in you, so no Lord, there was a moment that, in my mind, I was rededicating my life to the Lord because I thought I was a Christian already. But it's really as I look back that I think that was the first time I ever really repented of my sin. I think before that, I had just been kind of going through some random motions, doing what I thought I was supposed to do. But I don't think I ever really had, in my heart, actually said, I'm going to let go of my sin and I'm going to trust in Jesus with my entire life. Trust in Jesus he did. He let God lead him all the way to the pulpit. Wait a minute. Let me say that again, because I left one major detail out. 
He let God lead him all the way to the pulpit at the age of 17. Teenage Trip was preaching, y'all. Yeah, at about 17, where I've been a leader in the youth group for a little bit. Uh, my youth pastor asked me if I wanted to, uh, you know, preach a sermon and encourage my peers. And, and I did. And, he, you know, he kind of gave me some uh, some tips. And it's an experience in my mind that, that I, that's precious to me and that I was very grateful for. And I think that a lot of things like that where leaders gave me opportunities to lead in different ways. Uh, that I think ended up meaning a lot to me and my kind of trajectory. Well, let me tell you how it started in the garden of Eden with sweet Adam and Eve. First hearts beating, God made them in his image, then they ate from the tree. And since then, our men have been born as heathens. We got a sickness like people who can't beat diseases. It's how sin it deserves the eternal heat. He gave us life, we can keep it. I tell you the reason, but first, let's get back to the massacre at Eden. The very first time man was tripped by Satan On that date, and that day instantly changed our fate It was undoubtedly man's darkest hour But Eve didn't have a chance, she didn't know his power We probably would have failed too if the choice was ours It's a dilemma that man alone can't get out of Cause our relationship with this holy God is sour We all five short of him like he's tall as towers Instead of staying with the one with the awesome power Instead of chasing girls like awesome powers We all live out in the cold and the world is crowded with skeptics and doubters who want to do without them we got a problem we need something to solve it now cause we separated from the father and we lost without them we got a problem we need something to solve it now cause we separated from the father and we lost without them that's the bad news we was born in sin the good news we can be born again say the bad news we was born in sin the good news we can be born again Testimony. A Testimony, where Christian hip hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. A Connect with Testimony and Musician Story through social media. Find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at TestimonyStories.com. Talking back. No, they can't knock me down. Yes, sir, I do feel pain, but Jesus got me now. Triple E has always had a strong desire to teach. And that first sermon at the age of 17 was just the beginning of it. There was this thing in me where if I learn something or if I'm impacted by something, I feel compelled to share with other people. And it is almost part of how I experience something. I experience it and it impacts me deeply. And it's like, there was something in, in me that I, I just felt like I hadn't really experienced it until I could share it with other people. I wanted others to be impacted by the same thing. So I see something in scripture and I, I've been thinking something's one way and I find out it's another way. I'm like, man, all my friends think it's that other way too. I want to help them see this that I've seen. And so that passion burned in me in a way that it, you know, shaped how I thought about my music and, you know, things like being able to preach a sermon. So, and, and that's still, I still feel that even now. He has come a long way since preaching to his congregation as a teen. Now, not only does Tripp minister to a local congregation, but his words can be heard worldwide by thousands of fans. The knack for writing Tripp discovered he had as a kid developed into a successful music career. Currently, Tripp is signed to Grammy-winning Lecrae's Reach Records. But before Lecrae had the number one album in America— and appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Tripp had no idea who this dude was. I met him at a concert. Uh, I think it was 04. Winter of 04, maybe. Yeah, I, I met him at a concert. It was a Truth concert. The Truth was rapping. He was opening up for him. 
him and Tadashi and Sho. And uh, I'd never heard of Lecrae before, but True Fit was my favorite rapper at the time. And I was like, oh, who are these dudes? It's, they're like, you know, because most of the stuff I was listening to was East Coast. It was cross movement. It was true. And uh, I was like, who are these dudes? It's Southern, and they're killing it. And so I met them afterwards. And then I took their CD home, was loving the CD. And I knew somebody who had the crazy number, and I called him. This way, anybody knew who he was. And um, I said, hey, man, I'm about, I'm rapping to something in my church. Y'all want to come through? And then him and Tadashi came, and they opened up for me. They rapped. And... It was like a release party for this mixtape I recorded in my room. But they were unknown, too. That was very humble of them to come and do that. I mean, at least Lecrae had an album out, and they was like, you know. But didn't nobody care about it. Nobody knew about it. People were starting to. You know, that Real Talk album really spread by word of mouth. But it's not like it was some huge record label. Reach Records kind of just starting to exist and kind of starting to build a relationship with Crossman, which is why he was looking for truth, but... Yeah, I was un I was they were unknown. I was a lot more unknown. I was just a kid and uh the relationship started there. You know, he said, Hey man, is anybody discipling you? And I didn't know what that was. So then me and him began to spend time together. He poured into me the relationship he built as Reach was starting to build and yeah, signed with Reach Records when I was uh a senior in high school. I guess that made me better than I ever was. Look at me, I'm good, but now I'm on my forever buzz. If everything I have is taken out person who made it my life is hidden in them so when i die i can't and jesus really be walking with me so how i'm lame my life full of pain problems and such but i'm focused on forever and eternity's touch while the world try to fight me pharisees try to stole me i am t-bow in the fourth quarter they can't hold me yeah the lord is my coach got me off in the zone tell my mama that i'm good when he carry me so not only was he preaching as a kid, but he inked his first record deal too. This kid was like the Doogie Hauser of theology. Some of you young bugs may need to Google that reference. But basically, Young Trip was making major moves. So how excited was he about that? Uh, I started the album. I had a conversation with them when I was 17. Like, hey, do you want to do an album? And it was like... <laughs> That was like a dream come true kind of conversation. I was in one of them phone conversations where you try to keep your composure and your voice, but on the other side, you really like jumping around and dancing. That's how I was feeling. And I started recording that album when I was 17, but I didn't actually sign my name till I turned 18 at the end of that year, you know, because obviously I wasn't a, I was still a minor. And so we just waited, but I started the record when I was 17. And, Signed when I was 18 in the uh, winter of 05. More fans in the stands, homie, we made it. Yeah, they more please, cause radio stations played it. You know I'm praying we stay seeking his face. So we not disqualified from the race. Race, and my brothers promised me this. If notoriety get the best of me, make me quit. Quit, and I promise that I'ma stay. Buy you and edify you no matter how it gets. And to the fans, please promise me too. You listen to the words, but leave them and go and do. We do it for the Lord, but still we do it for you. They ain't never seen the gas, but it works. Show them it's true. Yeah. Trip Lee debuted his first album, If They Only Knew, in 2006. He quickly became a fan favorite and won a Stellar Award in 2011. In the midst of making albums and touring the world with fellow label mates, Trip got married and had a couple of kids. From the outside looking in, it looks like he was truly living the good life. But what fans didn't know was that for years, Tripp was struggling with chronic fatigue syndrome, and it seriously impacted his life. I ain't retired, but I thought about it. I felt called to be a pastor. I'm all about it. See his glory in his word and I gotta shout it. I realized that in 07. Uh, I was coming back from summer break to college and I felt terrible. I was sleeping like 18 hours a day um, and I was exhausted for the other six. So something was clearly wrong. Went to a, doc, a couple of doctors. They thought it was a virus at first and then told me eventually they said no, everything was chronic fatigue syndrome with a few doctors. And, you know, there wasn't much they could do about it other than telling me to kind of eat healthy and live healthy. Um, 
and uh, it affected me deeply. It's the reason I never finished college. A full-time student didn't really work for me and my energy. Uh, it was too hard to do every do everything to learn on other people's schedules, to get this paper in on this day and make it to class on this time, this time, on this day. It was just too hard with unpredictable energy. Yeah, so I, you know, that, when I first got, I failed all my classes just because I couldn't make it to them. I would run out of gas at the end of class. At the end of class, I really should have just, you know, taken the semester off, taken a few semesters off, but I was trying to press through it. But eventually, I've gotten better than I was then. Uh, but it still does drastically change my life, my lifestyle, the things I'm able to do. Uh, but God has been really gracious in it, and I've been able to to try to use my life uh, for his glory in, in different ways. So I'm grateful for that. I feel thorns where my crown was. I'll be weak, but I'm alive from the dust until dawn. Yeah, I'll survive because I got sweet victory. Nobody can take it from me. Sweet victory. Because I got. See me living. I know you see me living. You can't tell on these CDs what bro I'm knee deep in it. I'm waiting in my weakness, he may be deep in it. I be lying through my teeth to say I don't resent it. Even as I write these lines, I'm close to tears. My body ain't been working right for seven years. Miss me with that, keep your chin up, try to smile. Bro, I'm 26, I should feel better by a map. Keep all your anecdotes and cute quotes. I'll pass on cliches for true hopes. I dope. feel thorns where my crown was. I'll be weak, but I'm alive from the dust until dawn. Yeah, I'll survive. Cause I got sweet victory. Nobody can take it from me. Sweet victory. Cause I got sweet victory. To the ceiling, feeling good, we gon' make it to the finish yeah. Sweet victory, you hear me, Ali if you feel me Yeah, we still running even though we limping yeah. Sweet victory, cause we win it, yeah, you know we win it Even though we win it, we still in it yeah. Sweet victory, cause we win it, yeah, you know we win it Now we living, sweet yeah. Testimony, a musician's story Testimony where Christian hip-hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip-hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. Everyone has a testimony. And we want to hear yours. Tell us how God has transformed your life. Each month, we will select a person to highlight and interview. Find out more at TestimonyStories.com. Testimony. Download the podcast of Testimony and Musician Story on iTunes. Find out how at TestimonyStories.com. A musician Story. Hey, what's going on? This is your man Trip Lee. And right now you're listening to Testimony, a musician story. Sometimes I sit and reflect on the life I'm leading It's going so fast, it is like I'm speeding Sometimes I wake up and it's like I'm dreaming I read it 22, 16 was last weekend Been a crazy year, dad, dad, I'm grieving Man, I really miss him, I wish he was still breathing Two days later, got a wife, I'm cleaving Couple waiting pigs, couch, your boy straight cheesy Now tell me how I'm supposed to fight, can your boy stay firm? In this life where their jaws and the pains take turns You are broken in our world, when some things they burn You not honor when your boy can't learn How I must respond to your words And the cause that you tell me Aware of my frailty and begging you to help me How can I be a steward acting healthy? I know your grace won't fail me All of my life is yours to own while learning to cope with his illness, 
Tripp also had to deal with the decline of his father's health, which eventually turned into him mourning the loss of his father. And my dad died in 09. No, I mean, it was, it was a lot of different things. Uh, uh, he had enlarged heart, he had liver problems. He got sick um, at the end of 2008, and he died in May of 09. So he, he got sick and he declined pretty quickly. Following the release of 2011's The Good Life, he stepped away from music, moved to D.C., and joined a church ministry. He currently resides in D.C., and along with pastoring, he does admin work and marriage counseling. Tripp is a well-mannered individual, the type that lets you finish sentences, but he will politely interrupt if you mention the word retirement. So I have to jump in and say I never retired. You know, I never intended to uh, say, hey, I'm out forever. I'm never going to make a song again. I never intended to say that. But I, I did step away in order to focus my time on pastoral ministry. You know, at that time, I was about to come on staff in my church as a pastoral assistant with kind of general pastoral duties. And, uh, and I was realizing that I can't be gone all the time and prepare to pastor because it, it makes it difficult to be in people's lives. So there needs to be a change here. And so I stepped away from music and devoted my time there. So, and then ended up feeling like, hey, I think I have some extra time in my schedule to be able to slowly, slowly work on a new record. And so I kind of slowly chipped away at Rise. Yeah, here we are. After his two-year hiatus, Trip Lee dropped his fifth studio album, Rise. Rise reached number 16 on Billboard's Top 200 chart and number one on gospel charts. He sat number two on hip-hop charts right under the self-proclaimed King of the South, T.I. We don't know where we going. He's so far from my home. We don't know where we going. Black out, no power zone. We don't know where we going. My home is gone. They need you to show them, so turn them lights on. Yeah. We don't know where we going. He's so far from my home. Ensuing the lack of indictments for the deaths of Mike Brown and Eric Garner, Tripp took to the mic to express his thoughts and feelings in the song, Could Have Been Me. We have learned that Tripp has a skill for writing and the gift of teaching. He is a servant of God who can find teaching moments even in the most difficult times. But maybe you would If you looked at my life and you stood where I stood 
Use my eyes to look at these streets. Too real when I feel like it could have been me. Thank you for listening to Testimony, a musician story. To hear this episode again, as well as past episodes, visit TestimonyStories.com. Until next time, I'm Brown Theory, the music lover constantly seeking positive music. Like it